Should I? Hey, Carter, do you want to go horizontal or vertical? So we're all on the same. Uh, mm. Mm. Horizontal. Yeah. Oh. Well, I've got everybody's upside down. <laughs> all right, I think we are already live on Facebook, everybody. Oh. Cool. Uh, so we should definitely be. Um, Let's definitely see if everyone live. is here. Yeah. Okay, we have Tawa and this Bo. When okay. Johnny, trust Abby, where's Abby? Is Abby here? Let's wait for one more, one more. Can everybody see my share screen? Uh, yes. Yeah. Hello, one. Hello, Monica. Yes. Hello, Ennis. Hello, Tova. Hello, Bowman. Hi, Kata. Hi, everybody. Hi, Chloe. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Chloe. Hello. Hi, Doctor. Hello. Okay. All right. Okay. Super. Do we have when? Is when on? Yes, when is here? When can you hear us? All right, okay, yeah. I can't see her, but I can. Nice. All right, should we start, Karen? Yes, yes, uh, we lack um, Abby. Ab Abby is not here, so uh, time is running out, so just let's start. Okay, okay. guys, welcome back to Expo, Virtual Expo, and we are going to start our next panel on diving into the sustainable blue economy in the age of COVID-19. That's a very interesting topic indeed. Uh, and today we're focusing on Asia Pacific dive tourism. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna let our moderator taking over from here. Uh, please welcome everybody. You can make it like as if we are at the real edX. You can do the big round of applause to Ronnie, our moderator. <laughs> and over to you, Ronnie. Hi, hi everybody. Good afternoon um, for everybody, I believe, also for Chloe and I, right, and the other side of the universe. Uh, we miss all of you. It's so good to see everybody. You know, it's this time yeah. is also a hard time for us. We miss our show family. We miss all our friends. So it's really nice to see everybody. Um, thank you for joining us this afternoon for the folks who are um, listening in. And we would like to speak today not only about the coronavirus impact on our dive tourism industry, but also on its positive impact on the ocean. And as we plan our entry strategy, all countries are now planning exit strategies, but we are planning our entry strategies back into the market. As we plan those um, to see what we can do to maintain the healthy healing time of the ocean. So we've got an array of really interesting people joining us in this panel. Um, and I will go through them one by one. First, I will present myself. My name is Ronnie Benaharon. I'm originally from Israel, residing in the Philippines in normal days, <laughs> not today. Um, as we are still stuck in Israel, we weren't able to go back to the Philippines. Um, I'm working for Atlantis Dive Resort, which operates two resorts in the Philippines and the Liverboard, one of the top operations in the Philippines. I'm definitely very proud to be part of it. Um, and I've been part of the dive tourism family for the past decade, uh, working in various places. Um, very, very active when it comes to ocean conservation and what we can do as dive operators to support local communities and the ocean alike. Um, I am honored to be moderating this panel with the wonderful people that are on it. Um, and I'll go through um, the list of the folks that we have on. I am delighted if any, any of you please just wait until I finish reading out all the names. And then we will go through the first question and give time for everybody to speak. So the order I will be presenting my colleagues here will be the order that we answer. This is not an order I determine, guys. Blame it on Carter. 
So um, <laughs> first, we've got Anis Adenwala from India. And Hi guys. second, we've, hello. Second, we've Hi, got Ali. Dr. Trust Lin from Taiwan. Hi there. Third, we've got Abby Carnady from Indonesia. Fourth, yes. we've got Bo Mancao from the Philippines, my fellow Filipino. Then we've got Chloe Harvey from the UK. Sorry. Hello. And then Monica Chin from Malaysia. Hey, Mon. Hi, Joe. Tova uh, Harel Wornowski from Palau. And Wen Torioso, my dear friend from the Philippines. So in that order, hopefully you remember. So please, we'll give it now to Anis to present himself and chat a little bit about what he does. Uh, please take about two minutes. Hi. Hi guys, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, chat. I uh, basically am a scuba instructor, have been affiliated with CMAS and Paddy, and I run a scuba company in Bombay, which is an inland based mm -hmm. dive center. We teach people how to scuba dive, we travel all over the world, we do outbound expeditions, and we do a lot of equipment retail, we educate kids, we do a lot of school programs, we take them out in the open water and uh, expose them to the environment that we dive in. And they really enjoy this and they keep coming back for more. And obviously, they continue their education in deep diving and uh, respect the ocean. That's the agenda. And we're at it, and we're going to keep doing that. So I'm really glad to be part of this. I've been visiting ADEX all the time as a trade visitor. And in fact, last year, we had our first ADEX in India. It was fantastic. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there because I was swimming with the whales in Tonga. I had to be there. So. That's why I missed it. But yeah, why not? Uh, I was so planning to be in ADEC again this, this year, but uh, we are now homebound and working from home. So thank you very much for inviting me and glad to be here. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Anise, for joining us. Um, Dr. Trust Lin from Taiwan. Uh, hi there. Uh, my name is Trust Lin. I'm the director of Taiwan Tourism Bureau. Uh, I'm based in Singapore. I cover all the way from New Zealand, Australia, Singapore, and India, and also Middle East countries. And my previous job is uh, the director of uh, East Coast, National East Coast uh, Scenic Area of Taiwan. Uh, that's why I uh, learned uh, how to go diving. And I love diving. That's that's the reason why I um, participate in the edX. And also, uh, I'm very honored because during my uh, my previous job in East Coast of Taiwan, we do conduct a lot of uh, ocean cleaning and the beach cleaning, and also some uh, preservation program. So it's really honor to to save the world and. Great to be here again. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for so much for joining us, Dr. Lin. Um, Abby, are you there? Yes, I'm here, basically. Oh, awesome. <laughs> awesome. Wonderful. OK, let me start the video. All right. Hi, everybody. Hi, Abby. Yes. Um, Sorry, I, I mean, I'm is having a problem with the connection. So yeah, I managed to go in now. No problem. Well, hello, good afternoon, Abby. Thanks for joining. We're just doing a quick round to present um, all the participants okay. and what they do in their field. So we can take about a couple of minutes to uh, present yourself and what you do. Okay, uh, so my name is actually the full name is Daniel Abimanyu Karnadi, but make it short, it's more into Abi Karnadi, or they know me more as Abi. <clears throat> um, I actually, <clears throat> my background is actually a uh, uh, law, so I, I'm a law graduate. <clears throat> um, but diving is more interesting, so that's why I switch career. So in in '96, I become a, a diving instructor, speedy instructors. 
<clears throat> I opened my dive shop <clears throat> in 1998. And then um, I also actually uh, working together, uh, assisting the Ministry of Tourism of Indonesia. And with the Ministry of Tourism, actually I've been supporting them a few times with ADEX and also uh, participated as a panelist also a few times uh, with ADEX. So it's, uh, it's great to be here. It's an honor to be invited to become the panelist. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, it is very interesting to see in this panel, we have people both from um, government sectors, as public sector, as well as private sectors. So that gives us a very interesting insight. And you're actually wearing two hats. So yeah. that would be an interesting to hear, interesting thing to hear your comments. Uh, Bo, you're up. Bo. Oh, where are you? Oh, where'd you go? You're mute. Unmute yourself. There How's you that? Go. Yeah, now we can hear you. All right. Hi, everybody. Hello. Um, Hello. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, the last time I was in ADEX was in 2014, and now look where we are. Uh, yeah, really quickly, uh, I wear many hats in the industry. So um, one of it is being a content creator. Another one is um, sitting on the board of commissioners for the Philippine Commission on Sports Scuba Diving. And um, yeah, that's about it for now. Well, short and brief, Bo. Thanks for that. Um, Chloe? Hello, everyone. Nice to see you all. Sad we're not in Singapore enjoying each other face to face, but um, nice to be here anyway. My name is Chloe Harvey. Um, I'm a scuba diving instructor um, since the age of 15, um, but I'm also a marine biologist and I run um, the UK charity, the Reef World Foundation. Um, and we run the Green Fins Initiative in partnership with the UN Environment Programme. Um, and through Green Fins, we are hoping to um, make sustainable diving the social norm globally. Um, we're working with governments around the world to help them to improve the way that they're managing their diving industry and dive centers as well as, as the wider diving industry. So nice to see you all, some old friends, old, old friends um, and some new ones too. Great, thanks for the intro, Chloe. We are very proud um, to be Greenfin accredited uh, by yes. Atlantis Dive Resorts in the Philippines. So thank you for your support. We are incredibly happy that you are there next to us in Dumaguete, helping um, the community to build sustainable practices. Thank you. Uh, Monica. Yeah, hi everyone. Hello from uh, Dive Heaven in Sabah, part of the Malaysia. Yeah, like Chloe said, it's really, how to say, I feel so awkward that we were not there in Singapore. But yeah, after all the hard work of ADEX team, they still managed to put all of us together. That's pretty amazing, you know. Well, okay, my name is Monica. I'm originally from Borneo, Sabah. Um, I, I, I was uh, in scuba diving for 21 years this year. And I have my own small company uh, doing uh, intermediary documentary and also uh, taking dive buddy from all over the world, uh, go diving everywhere in uh, Sabah. And I'm also one of the um, director of uh, education, conservation and community for ADREC uh, Research Education and Conservation Center located in uh, Borneo in Sabah. So mostly we do a lot of uh, conservation project, you know, like cleaning the cleaning up the beach, dive and clean the reef every day is already, how to say, is uh, our daily routine for us. But yeah, it's the normal daily things that we do. So we have a lot of program coming, ongoing actually, but due to the pandemic, everything just need to shut down. So that's a pretty stress up um, eventually. But yeah, 
I'm just a normal person like everyone. We love the same ocean and we wish to contribute back to our mother nature, our ocean. Yeah, thank you. Great, wonderful. Thank you for this lovely introduction. Ms. Tova. Hello from Palau. Um, my name is Tova and I'm from Palau. Been living in Palau for 27 years. Um, we run a dive shop in a liveaboard and I also very much into conservation. Um, I'm the president of the Micronesian Shark Foundation and we do shark research and shark education and book publishing programs, as well as uh, school education. Um, so we incorporate this into our dive shop as well, and um, it's working very nicely. Um, that's it. Super, thank you, Tova. And I was actually living in Palau and was able to see Tova's efforts firsthand, and it is an honor to have you with us on the panel today. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. And last but not least, Ms. Wen Sorioso from the Philippines. Ronnie. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Yeah, my, my connection is so bad and I'm, I'm sorry about that. I keep getting cut off. But anyway, it's afternoon. It's nearing evening here in the Philippines. And hi to you guys. I think it's the first time I'm able to join any ADEX panel. But uh, I've had the pleasure of working with John and the ADEX team um, for some time. And it's really an honor to be invited and to to support them in this very very good initiative for the industry and just to give an introduction i'm Wen, and i'm Wen serioso from the philippine department oh to support the industry um, from the sports scuba diving. Wonderful. When I think I, we lost you there for a couple of seconds. Oh my so gosh. if you could just repeat your position. Yeah, it's okay. Your face is also really pixel. So bad. Is it okay now? Yes. I much know. Now. It's really pixel. Okay. Is that better? Is that better? Yes, maybe try to freeze. <laughs> Just joking. It's okay. I think the voice is more important um, than the video. And looks like we've lost Wen. So, well, I can um, quickly fill in for her. So, Wen is. Um, well, she wears many hats. She's the executive director for PCSSD, so the Philippine Commission for Sports and Scuba Diving, and the head of product and market development for diving in the Philippines for the Department of Tourism. Are you back, Wen? I'm, can you hear me? Okay, super, super. I gave your introduction, sorry. Yes, and as I said, I'm, I'm, we're working in the Department of Tourism to support guys like Ronnie and Bo, who are actively working to promote the Philippine dive tourism. Absolutely. And thank you very much. Thanks for joining, Wen, and thank you for your support. Um, guys, so we are, we are all gathered here, uh, public and private sector alike, to discuss the implications of coronavirus on our industry. Um, I don't think we need to spend much time with discussing the implications. I think everybody is well aware of that. Um, while yeah. the pandemic has obviously affected not only travel industry Earth. as a whole, yeah. but of course the dive tourism industry. So that while we are a sector within the travel tourism or within the industry, of our industry is more of a leisure industry, right? So if you're thinking about all the folks that still need to travel today for their jobs being a necessity, 
you name it, doctors or you name it, we are ending up at the end of the, of the list, if you will. Uh, with all the current restrictions government have on nationalities entering and exiting various countries, it has basically put our tourism at a halt. Um, I don't know what the, I assume the other folks on this panel from the private sector, just like us at Atlantis Resorts, have been pretty much forced to shut down until uh, we get greater clarity from both the governments and the countries that we operate, but also from the governments in the countries where we receive guests from. So if, if you could quickly uh, describe to us today, what is the situation within your operation, um, given everything that is going on at the moment, if you're closed, if you're open, and if you are where you are, what efforts are you doing to remain in contact with our guests, with our partners in the industry? So we will try to do this uh, by order. So we'll start with Denise. All right, so as I said, we are um, an inland paddy dive center and most of our stuff is you know, starting up in a pool. Pools are closed, can't do much. The only thing you can do is uh, continuing your education online, like taking up various courses and you know, referring back to me or my instructors and you know, taking it from there. But obviously travel away from the country is not happening. So I guess we are just keeping in touch with all our guests talking about stuff that we do. And it's given me opportunity to go back into my archives of hard drives and pull out all my old videos and footages and stuff. And some that have not been used in the final edit, they suddenly pop up and like, wow, I didn't use this. So it's there and that's what's keeping us going, keeping in touch with uh, people, you know, their comments and stuff. So we are hanging in there waiting. So I guess initially it's gonna be domestic travel which is close by. And uh, for India, you're looking at uh, the Lakshadweep, the Andamans, or, you know, along our coastline, you have diving in Netrani, you have Pondicherry, uh, south of the, the southernmost tip of India, it's Rameshwaram, you have Kerala. So it's all there, but uh, right now, nobody can travel. So we're just awaiting and things are going to change, hopefully, I guess, in another three months. So we hope for the best and hanging in there. Thank yeah, you. there's no, nothing way more to do. I think in that sense, India is a bit um, lucky that you do have your domestic travel that you can rely on and domestic um, tourists, really. Um, that oh, yeah. India is a huge city. country. Besides Scuba, which is last on the list, you can go and visit the forest. You can go up north. You can do stuff with that. But there's so much to do in the country. But yeah. So yeah. I guess we all have to wait and watch. Yeah, exactly. We will have to wait and see. Um, Dr. Lin, um, if you would like to, to share with us, because you are from the public sector, so <laughs> as the director of Taiwan Tourism Bureau, how is Taiwan looking at what is happening now? And really, what is happening now? And how are you looking to, to the future? <clears throat> uh, Let's take, take a look at the, the international visitors' arrival. Uh, this March, we only have 78,000 international visitors to Taiwan, while in 2019 March, we got 1.1 million international visitors. We dropped about 92% of international visitors to Taiwan. And, uh, but thanks to our government, we do so-called single head do a head strategy to prevent the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so far, we only have 429 confirmed cases and we have zero new cases for the past six days. And uh, for some counties in Taiwan, they, uh, they, they never had uh, uh, COVID-19 confirmed case. So amazingly, I just call uh, to my uh, coach, scuba diver coach in Green Island of Taitung. He told me his business increased 15%. I say why? Because he, he told me because three reasons. Number one, uh, there's, there has no case in Taitung County. Uh, number two, uh, March, 
April is our outbound uh, diverse hot season. And right now, nobody go abroad. That's why the people stay in Taiwan and go, go, diver, go diving. And number three, so I know so he's Kitty. Uh, we we, we are more within Taiwan. Yes, yeah. Because uh, right now, our school and the uh, office are still open. Uh, we don't have so called a circuit break or lockdown. Um, just, a, just as I, I mentioned, we do have single head to a head. So we are well controlled. Only 429, 429 confirmed cases. So, and number three reason, he, he's joking because right now we have social distance. But if you go diving, there's no underwater social distance. It's okay. Okay, that's a very good reason. And uh, so far for the tourism industry as a whole, we are serious damage. And we are working on some educational program or we subsidize, but to, to scuba diving, amazingly, they are still increased due to the uh, more local divers, say they go diving uh, domestically. Wow, That's super it. encouraging news for yeah. Taiwanese dive shops. Yeah. Absolutely. Abby, I'm not sure the situation is quite the same um, in Indonesia. No, basically for Indonesia, dive, I mean, tourism is completely stopped. Diving tourism is completely stopped. Uh, all tourist attractions are closed, um, well, including dive sites. We have many dive sites, but we are not allowed to go into even it's a shore diving, so it's closed. It's really hit us very hard. Uh, we've got thousands of you know, formal and informal workers are basically losing their job. Yeah. So hopefully it's going to end soon. Yeah. And for me as um, in my dive shop, basically what we're doing is uh, because we have regulations to uh, or, you know, close all the, the office. So yeah, we have to close down we still over an online training. Uh, the response is not very good because of, you know, customers still asking about, uh, so if I finish, can I, you know, go to the pool directly and everything, right? Well, the pool is open. I mean, if you see the window on, on the back over there, there's a window, that's my pool. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. so there's a window where you have access, but uh, there's no activity. You're not allowed to do anything, right? So even no, no pool activity. So what we do is basically just try to keep the positivity by bring up uh, um, you know a lot of pictures, underwater pictures and everything, and then we run um, like you know a Zoom uh, to our customers, just remind them you know diving is still there, but we just have to wait yeah, until the time come until everything is you know back to normal. We call it the new normal later on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we hope that comes quickly for all of us. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, Mr. Bo, and when perhaps together um, or one after the other, uh, PCSSD, I mean, please do give us an update on what is happening in the Philippines at the moment in terms of dive sites and um, how do you keep in touch with everybody in the Philippines? I mean, there are obviously thousands of resorts being affected. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Would you like to go? Yeah. Thanks. Um. I I just paused the video because uh, I think it's it's uh, interrupting my connection. Yeah. But anyway, um, similar to what was mentioned by others, the the Philippine tourism is also uh, drastically affected now. It everything is uh, on hold because um, we are on ECQ that's on enhanced community quarantine. Because the, the focus now is like, uh, we're following the guidelines of the UNWTO. Um, we are focusing on stopping the spread of the, the infection so that um, we can work together um, in the future. So the message now is to stay home. So we are on ECQ because uh, we want to support our frontline personnel, you know, um, practicing social distancing and um, at the moment PCSSD is uh, 
working because PCS is this an attached agency of the Philippine Department of Tourism. So we're working now um, to come up with a tourism response and recovery plan. So um, we're focusing on uh, um, uh, mitigating the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic on the industry, which has been badly affected. So um, aside from that, uh, we are coming up with uh, new guidelines on standards and accreditation to, to adapt to, to, to the new normal because we're going to have new protocols in diving. Um, everything will be different. The landscape will be different, understandably, from here on. So we have to, to have a more relevant program for the industry. So we are busy on that. Um, we are taking this time to, to prepare and to come up to continuously develop the industry so that we can come back better and stronger after this. Thank you, thank you, Wen, for doing that and for your ongoing support. Bo, would you like to add anything? Well, um, just to add to what Wen said, besides being on ECQ and on the, the new normal of the diving industry, um, also this, the travelers, the dive travelers, we have no idea yet when uh, the flights are coming back on. We have no idea when the ports are opening again. Uh, we were told that this could change by the 15th of the month. Two weeks, not that bad. But um, in the meantime, a lot of the industry players that I've talked to, what they've been doing is um, they've been promoting themselves. They've been promoting themselves on social media. Um, screen time is up right now, it's up by 42%. And um, yeah, everybody's just glued to the screen right now. So it's a great time for us to, you know, promote your, promote your dive center, promote um, your industry, because this, this storm is not gonna last forever, yeah? Exactly, exactly, we sure hope so. I mean, we know, um, for example, at Atlantis Dive Resorts, we started a webinar series. So we have a webinar every week. And on top of that, we, I personally have been doing webinars with our agents worldwide so they can invite their divers. So um, this is actually my sixth Zoom in the last three days. Um, and we are doing um, lots of sessions promoting Philippines as a dive destination on, under the, the slogan of what we call, all we can do is dream and then present dream Philippine dive destination to people that are now diving in their dreams, basically. So um, interesting. Um, I'd like to hear from Chloe. Um, how is the Reef Foundation doing right now? What is it doing right now? Um, can it do anything right now? Yeah, I'm, so we are... Um, fairly well set up for the, the conditions that we're under at the moment as a team um, at the Reef World Foundation. So we're fairly widely spread from Costa Rica across um, Europe and over into Asia as a team. So we're pretty used to working remotely um, from, from our laptops. And we usually get a lot more face-to-face -face with stakeholders around the world, which is the fun bit. So we're all missing that. Um, but in terms of our work, <clears throat> we're actually seeing that the, the industry is taking this time as sort of, well, proactive members of the industry um, are taking this time as an opportunity to sort of pause, reflect and review internally within, within their businesses um, and seeing sustainability as um, something that they can really focus on right now. So the Greenfins resources are something that the, the dive centers and our industry partners like Paddy, um, Zoo Blue, Paralens are really looking to try and bolster their um, sustainable policies internally. Um, so we've actually never been busier as a team <laughs> trying to pull together as much support as we can for um, Greenfins dive centers around the world as well as, as industry partners. Um, we, we don't have access to the government support here in the UK um, because we don't want to pause activities because we see ourselves as a great support for the industry at the moment. 
um, I think lots of people are talking about when the industry recovers and I think that actually we're going to see a restart of the industry and I think the industry is going to be something very different um, to what we all recognised from before and um, I think that we have a fantastic opportunity to come out of this a lot more resilient, um, a lot more sustainable and a lot stronger. Um, so we're really trying to do all we can and certainly not pause our activities here um, at the Reef World Foundation but actually really drive um, the support that we're providing to dive centres and our industry partners. Um, so we're doing a lot of behind the scenes work, reviewing our Greenfins materials, looking and um, we're, we're doing a um, survey at the moment into those materials and how we can make them more useful. Um, trying to respond to what we think the industry might look a little bit like after this and trying to get some resources out there for, for example, keeping your kit clean and other ways of doing things in a, in a very environmentally friendly manner as well. Um, we're also looking at trying to make as much of our resources digital, um, so trying to get as much online as possible. We're seeing a huge spike in interest in our online dive guide e-course. Um, loads of people are doing that at the moment. I think dive guides are often, diving professionals are often so busy with day-to-day -day life. The Greenfins dive guide e-course is something that they always intended to do, but never quite got around to. So people are really seeing now as a good opportunity. Um, lots of downloads of the Greenfins handbooks for dive operators as well. And um, so we can see that dive business managers are really trying to review those internal policies um, and improve practices for when they can open so that they can really attract that um, eco-minded customer, which we know is going to be the next big cons consumer base for the, the travel diving travel industry. So we're seeing so much activity and we're really pleased to be able to stay really active at this time um, because we also see a lot of doom and gloom. We understand it's really stressful for people as well. And um, so we're trying to create a bit of a, a bright light in amongst all of that. Wow, wonderful. It's good to hear people are keeping busy and reviewing materials and actually taking, taking the time to improve your outreach. Um, for us when we all get back in business. So thank you for your support. And I hope that everybody is definitely following your guidelines. You're um, welcome. And if anyone has any ideas about how we can support you better, um, any suggestions, please do just reach out to us at ReefWorld um, info at greenfins.net. Um, we, we really like to hear from you and um, get involved in the materials survey so you can have your say with that as well. Um, so do stay in touch. Super. Please put that email address on the chat window so all the participants can actually see it and then copy it. We've got a chat window to do this soon. Super. Thank you so okay, much. Chloe. I'll do that now. Um, and again, we're going by the order. Um, so, Monica, what is happening right now in Malaysia? Um, what is the Malay government doing? And how are you as a marine conservationist um, seeing your role? in the future of the dive industry as it reopens. Yeah, I mean, thank you, Johnny. So first of all, of course, um, nature is healing. It's a very happy news, actually, for all of us as uh, environmentalists and conservationists. That's the first thing that we are um, happy for, anyway. So like in Malaysia, a same case with the um, same situation with uh, Indonesia. We are totally not allowed to go out. I mean, only one person allowed to go out to just to for um, daily ration or stuff like that. And all the government sector uh, company, actually we are in a lockdown. So no activity, uh, not allowed, not even shore dive like Ab Abby said. So that's a pretty sad. Actually, um, most of my time I live in the island. So it's pretty hard for me to stay inside this concrete box for almost uh, two months. It's not easy. But yeah, I mean, in terms of the um, situation of our dive operator, my dive friends, dive uh, center, I try to uh, get in touch with uh, mostly all of them because uh, another thing here, we have big challenges on the internet connection as well. It's not so good. Yeah, so I come to know a few of my friends are closing down the dive shop and stop operation um, the dive resort until end of this year. 
and wow. some of yeah so some of my friends are selling off their you know dive professional they're selling off their stuff but you know that's not the things that we want to hear actually you know so we really i mean um we really hope that things will get uh, recover fast and as soon as possible uh, it's actually a brand new start for all of us it's like a brand new day everything are new so um and then in uh government sector our malaysian government they give a lot of uh, aid um, um for certain certain um, industry people the community over here as well and today we receive i received a good news during the adex uh, uh, opening ceremony that was a uh, state government has released the first um uh how to say um one one time uh, eight uh, fun, yeah, one time mm -hmm. fun uh, to help all the dive pro in our states, in our Sabah. So right. that's a big relief for them. Although it's not a big money, but it's really, I feel so thankful for all of them. I'm not the dive master, I'm just an advanced uh, diver, but I've been trying to help them to push and encourage all my uh, die family don't look down you know it's although i know like most of them are not really educated and they are not so good in all this webinar online live stuff like that and some of them don't even have facebook so i try to encourage them to be stay positive and show them the lights you know yeah that's what i can do so in my center in my conservation center chloe i will get back to you as soon as possible <laughs> Yeah, and in my conservation center, we do a lot of, um, we have diving, but uh, only conservation diver, we are allowed to dive, we are not open for public, um, public diver, walk-in diver, we are not really pushing on diving thing, we are more on uh, research, educational program, and also a conservation project like coral planting, coral propagation, building the reef, recover the reef is one of our uh, core project and as well as uh, seaweed cultivation, um, seagrass, stuff like that. So all these things that we already put it in place for the past one year and suddenly we have to leave. We have to leave the site, everything. And hopefully when we go back, everything will be, wow, it's amazing. Yeah, and then um, I want to add up some things like what Koloi said, um, I have been so busy underwater um running all the project with our international volunteer and yeah we lost a lot of international volunteer as well and they're forced to go back so i've been busy with all this uh, conservation project and of course it's uh, not easy and hopefully i mean all of us like um chloe said we have time to review back all our pamphlet our uh, material, our policy, our um, project SOP, and um, uh, surprisingly, you know, I have a lot of things to do, compile all the uh, things that we have done for the past, uh, past one year. And the result like, wow, we have been doing this so much and make me realize that there's a lot more things that we missed out actually. Yeah, so, Anyway, we I really hope that uh, this uh, edX uh, virtual pixel expo can help all our dive industry, industry player, tour player, dive pro, or whoever into the ocean. You know, we really hope that um, we can come together. We cannot. I mean, from my point of view, I can't do it alone. I can't stay here alone. You know, I'm so thankful that all these people like. Edax and all the staff, the, the, the friends, and we have to lift up each other. We have to share the lights that we saw to everyone, you know, so that we don't lose the hope. We need the hope. We need to stay strong and sustain um, so that we can come out stronger once this pandemic is over. Yeah, that's all. I yeah. shit, I'm just bummed. Yeah, absolutely. One ocean, one love, one yeah. family. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's all from me. I don't know what else to say, but just 
we just need to stick together. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Monica. And Tova, um, you have a very interesting role wearing various hats. Private sector is owner of a very large dive operation in Palau. Um, unfortunately, as we all know, Palau cannot really rely on domestic travel um, for dive tourism. So um, I would like to get your perspective on, uh, first of all, what is happening in Palau and also how do you see yourself, how do you see your re-entry strategy given that you cannot, like India or the Philippines, rely on domestic um, tourism to reopen and get reboosted? And of course, under the shark conservation, what are you guys seeing right now? What will be, again, the entry strategy? Are we seeing any difference in the moment at the moment between um, the conservation efforts or how Palau is behaving with or without the diving tourism? Okay, so we're, number one, we're very fortunate because this well, Palau is one of the few places that do not have any coronavirus uh, cases um, for now. Um, and, but there's no flights, so uh, for now we're doing very well. Um, so we don't really need to social distance ourselves and we can go diving, but we cannot afford to go too often. The bright side, and Monica, absolutely, I love what you said. Um, the bright side is that if we go out um, and just Thank you, Tova. A boat there, we're the only ones that go out diving and it's insane what we're seeing. Um, when normally Palau is very famous for sharks and um, big fish. And I don't know if it's a coincidence. I don't think so. The numbers are triple than the normal um, of what we normally see. And it's, it's actually very encouraging. Um, we are as well, I've been busy with doing a lot of webinars and, and interviews with a hope and um, we actually created a slogan, see you in Palau after Corona, you know, we need to put the hope in there. And um, on top of that, yes, we need to all unite and assist one another and share. Um, and I believe that our first, when the uh, flights will start and the sky will open, um, I believe that our first tourists will be from Asia. And that's why I think ADEX is so, so important for us, for us all, because uh, people will travel only short distances. Um, for example, less people will venture long distance uh, flights. We have a few people that are stranded in Palau for two months now because there's no flights and they cannot leave and they're from Europe. And uh, <laughs> I mean, it could be worse being stuck in another country, <laughs> but um, still they wanna go home, they wanna go to their families. They are stranded in Palau. So again, we are working very hard on uh, creating better uh, websites and connecting with agents, but we just need to be patient. And uh, patience is the essence for all of us um, in hope and positive um, thinking. Thank you. Absolutely, amen to that. We, we all definitely hope that this will end soon for everybody. And it's quite encouraging to hear what you're saying about what, um, what you're seeing out there at the moment when there are no other bubbles around. Yeah, um, I wanted to see if anyone has any last comments or remarks. I think most of us has, have spoken about the hope and the tomorrow and what will happen when this all starts and when the sky opens. I think we all remain very positive um, I would like to hear from our public sector friends, um, Dr. Lin, when, uh, what do you think the governments will be doing once this guy opens up and how will they be supporting um, the private sector 
and those will be our ending um, comments for this panel. Well, like, like I just said uh, earlier, we have to think ahead, do ahead. So we are well prepared. We have subsidized our agent, our uh, tourism companies, and we have a lot of training program uh, during this um, uh, COVID-19 pandemic Hello. period. I, so uh, also we have postponed the uh, major uh, international campaign for promotion, but uh, we just suspended, we didn't cancel it. So once the, we can resume the international travel, the uh, marketing campaign will just get on to help attract more international visitors to our to to our uh, country wonderful wonderful we sure hope that that happens quite fast um miss wen what is the philippines government planning to do once the sky opens up are we pushing are we pushing forward 200 horsepower? <laughs> I think she lost her connection. Oh. Um, Bo, are you there? What's up, Ronnie? Okay, super. Well, I think we've lost, I think we've lost when. So um, I'd like to thank everybody for participating. Yeah, are you there? So thank you everybody from participating from the public sector, from the private sector. One ocean, one love. Thank you ADEX family for bringing us all together and one making industry. sure that we don't forget each other. Namaste. Yeah. Thank you. We, yeah. Namaste. Yeah. We look forward Thank to you. virtually hugging yeah. everybody. <laughs> we really, we really hope that the sky is open again. <laughs> Inshallah. Yeah. Yeah. Inshallah. Well, the homework is still there because we still have uh, have to battle with uh, pollution, marine pollution. Yeah, Remember that's that another story. We're going, we're going, we're going oh to God. create uh, um, a lot of, you know mask Plastic, uh, yeah. protection the glove, uh, device the whatever glove. gloves and everything so yeah. we still have to battle that on top of the other plastic war I know. <clears throat> thank, well, I know, Abby. Uh, thank you Abby. i thank have you. a reusable thank mask so i hope so does everyone else yeah yep. all right all right thank you, bye everybody thank you, thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, bye. Thanks, bye thanks ronnie bye. thanks all the panelists. Bye. thank you <laughs> thank you Kata. thank you see you Right. Can uh, can anybody hear me? Uh, yes, still can hear you. Okay. Perfect. Sorry. Um, so thank you so much to all the panelists. And of course, thank you to our moderator Ronnie, so much. Um, thank you for all of your time. And as Adi was just mentioning uh, about the problems that we might see in the ocean after this pandemic or during this pandemic already, uh, which kind of lead into our next panel discussion, which is going to be about the state of the ocean in the age of COVID-19. So if you are interested and still in the mood, please feel free to join us. The link in Zoom is on the chat box. Um, so you can already go and register and join us for our next panel. I'll be your moderator. So I'll see you um, in just a few minutes with our next panel discussion, the state of the ocean in the age of COVID-19. See you in a bit. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.